I am Jonathan Band and you join me on board one of Britain's most iconic ships, Admiral Lord Nelson's flagship HMS Victory, which was launched 250 years ago in May of 1765. I'd like to talk to you about a maritime charity of which I'm very proud to be a Vice President, the Shipwreck Mariner Society. It's been making a vital contribution to the welfare of our seafaring community for over 175 years. Founded back in 1839 following the disastrous loss of a fishing fleet from Clovelly, the Society was established to give financial support to merchant mariners and fishermen, the survivors of shipwreck, and the widows, orphans and aged parents of those tragically lost off the coast of the British Isles. In 1882, a not untypical year, 445 merchant and fishing vessels were lost on our shores. A staggering loss of ships and lives that is difficult for us to comprehend these days. Today, thankfully, there are far, far fewer shipwrecks, although they still do happen each year, usually single manned fishing vessels, with a devastating effect on the lives of the families left behind. This year we commemorate the 70th anniversary of the end of World War II, six years of conflict in which the Shipwreck Mariner Society made a unique and very significant contribution to the lives of thousands of survivors, not just sailors, but soldiers, airmen, nurses and civilians who were landed at British ports after being rescued, particularly during the Battle of the Atlantic. In 1941, at Greenock alone, the Society helped 3,120 survivors from 311 ships. A year later, it was 4,300 survivors from 288 ships. And in 1943, 3,680 from some 252 ships. And that was just at one port. There were 21 others. In fact, the number of people the charity assisted as a direct result of World War II are quite remarkable. And this includes fishermen and their dependents. Over 60,600 seamen, 6,600 widows, 8,000 orphans and 4,100 aged parents were helped. The immediate assistance provided to these survivors arriving back in the United Kingdom was for clothing, food, accommodation and rail passes to get them home to their loved ones. These days, the Society's name is more of a metaphor for our work, but our primary purpose remains the same, to provide financial help to ex-merchant seafarers, fishermen and their dependents who are in need. They may be retired or unable to work at sea owing to an accident, ill health or for compassionate reasons. Or they may have found themselves unemployed in their late 50s and are unable to get a job after only knowing working life at sea. There are many ways we can help. We pay an immediate grant to the widow of a serving seafarer who dies, whether death occurs at sea or ashore. Regular grants are paid to former seafarers, their widows and partners, whose financial circumstances justify ongoing support. And there are special grants. These are paid to meet particular needs in difficult circumstances or crisis situations. For example, to replace broken washing machines and fridges, to cover utility bill arrears, new boilers, bathroom conversions, and to pay for indoor and outdoor mobility aids. Over the last 12 months, we provided financial support in over 2,100 cases at a cost of £1.4 million. 2014 marked the shipwrecked mariner's 175th anniversary and to mark it, we were delighted to welcome our patron, Her Royal Highness the Princess Royal, back to Clovelly, where she unveiled a beautiful and poignant plaque on the quay wall. Very kindly funded by Friends of the Society, it recognises the super work of this charity over its 175-year history and commemorates the lives of those lost in the original tragedy that led to our founding. Her Royal Highness also met some of the descendants of the lost fishermen. Can I please ask you to support our work? Donations can be made online, through our website, by post, by phone or into our very large red painted sea mines 
to be found on 60 of our seafronts. Whatever you can give will help make a real difference to those who often have nowhere else to turn when they face really hard times. And importantly, if you or someone you know might benefit from the Society's financial support or for further information about any aspect of the charity's work, please do get in touch. We're here to help and we do make a difference. Thank you.